Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We have finally reached the end of Chapter 10. So this lecture is going to be a combination of Sections 10.9 and 10.10 .10 on convergence of Taylor series and applications of Taylor series. All right, so what you see here are some frequently used Taylor series. If you are a student in my class, I will be posting a PDF of this slide uh, in the module that contains this assignment. So here you see Taylor series for one over one minus x, one over one plus x, e to the x, sine x, cosine x, natural log of one plus x, and the inverse tangent of x. Uh, notice the interval of convergence for each series. Uh, for the first two, it's the absolute value of x is less than one. <clears throat> for the next three, it's all real numbers. For natural log of one plus x, it's the half open, half closed interval, negative one is less than x, is less than or equal to one. And for inverse tangent of x, its absolute value of x is less than or equal to one. And we will be making frequent uh, references to uh, this slide throughout this lecture. All right, so let's uh, talk about how we're going to use those, <clears throat> excuse me, those common Taylor series. Uh, with these examples, number one, we'll use substitution to find a couple of Taylor series, actually a couple of Maclaurin series. In example two, we will use power series operations to find, again, a couple of Maclaurin series. And then in number three, I'll show you how um, long division works with power series to find the first four non-zero terms in the Maclaurin series for this function. So going over to the tablet. All right, so first we're going to use substitution to find the Maclaurin series for e to the negative x over two. So um, again, I'm going to be referencing table 10.1 frequently. So if you have access to that, to that handout, it might be a good idea to uh, print it or have it up on your screen. So from table 10.1, we see that the Maclaurin series for e to the x is one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial, et cetera, et cetera, which is the sum n going from zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So all I have to do is just replace x with negative x over two. So I'm gonna use some color coding here. Take out the x and replace it with a negative x over two. And I'm just gonna leave some blank spaces here for a moment. And in all those blank spaces, I'm going to put a negative x over two. All right, so uh, you can even make that replacement in the closed form expression for this series. So let's write blank to the n over n factorial, and in the blank, I'm going to write negative x over two, but I would like to pretty that up a little bit, so I think it would look a little nicer if I wrote it as the sum n going from zero to infinity, uh, negative one to the n times x to the n over two to the n times n factorial. And that is the Maclaurin series for that function. All right, next, we have one over two minus x. Now this one is a little trickier. Uh, notice that we do have a 
Maclaurin series for one over one minus X. And again, that's from table 10.1. <laughs> so that just goes one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed. Okay, and it's actually uh, pretty easy to see why this particular uh, Maclaurin series works. It's because uh, this is just a geometric series with a first term of one and a common ratio of X. So we know that uh, geometric series converges to A over one minus R when the absolute value of R is less than one. Uh, so this is just a special case of that, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do to be able to use this form is kind of sneaky. I am going to write, oh, let me write the uh, closed form for this, the sum n going from zero to infinity of x to the n. All right, so now I'm going to take one over two minus x. The fact that this is a two instead of a one is kind of a big problem, so I really wish that was a one. And uh, one way that I can make it a one is to factor out a two. So then that would be one over two times one minus one half X, which of course is one half times one over one minus one half X. So I need to do two things. I need to take the Maclaurin series for one over one minus X and I need to write it, I need to replace X with one half X. So that should be easy enough. Okay, so just take out all of those X's and put a one half X there. All right, and then we have to multiply that series by one half. So let's uh, pull out another color here. One half times one over one minus one half X is just going to be one half times this entire series. Okay, so I have run out of room, so I'm gonna to go to the top. Okay, so that's going to look like, uh, let's see, one half plus, I think I'm gonna write this using exponents. It might make it a little easier to keep track of. Uh, one over two squared times X plus one over two cubed times X squared. And then the next term would be one over two to the fourth times X cubed. All right. So the closed form uh, for that series would be the sum N going from zero to infinity, uh, x to the n over two to the power n plus one. All right, see how that works? I think that's pretty cool. All right, in the next batch of problems, we're going to use power series operations <clears throat> uh, to find a Maclaurin series for each of these functions. So again, from table 10.1, I have a Maclaurin series for sine X. Sine X is equal to X minus X cubed over three factorial plus X to the fifth over five factorial, et cetera, et cetera. 
which is the sum n going from zero to infinity. I hope I can squeeze this in here. Negative one to the n times x to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. All right, so all we have to do to turn that into a series for x squared sine x is just multiply the whole thing by x squared. In other words, distribute an x squared. So x squared sine x is going to be x squared times the series x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, et cetera, et cetera. So that gives you this series, x cubed minus x to the fifth over 3 factorial plus x to the seventh over 5 factorial. In other words, we've just increased each exponent by 2. So the closed form is going to look a lot like the closed form for sine x, except I'm going to bump up the exponent on the x by 2. So it's still going to be negative 1 to the n, but now instead of x to the 2n plus 1, it's going to be x to the 2n plus 3. And downstairs, I will still have 2n plus 1 factorial. That's all there is to it. All right, next we have cosine x minus sine x. Uh, this one is really easy, especially if you don't get too distracted with you know, looking at it term by term. Uh, we have a series for cosine x, which is the sum n going from zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And we have a series for sine x, the same one we used in the last problem, the sum n going from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So why not combine those into a single series? We're going to have the sum n going from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n over 2n factorial minus negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. And that's really all you have to say. It is kind of, um, it is kind of neat, though, to look at the uh, first few terms of this series. Um, so if you look at the original series, all of the even degree terms uh, keep their original signs, and then all of the odd degree terms, the signs get flipped. So this series starts with a one, and then it has two minuses, and then it has two pluses, And then it goes two minuses, two pluses, two minuses, two pluses. So that's kind of cool. You might have a difficult time, like if I handed you this series uh, coming up with the general term, but uh, having the general terms for cosine x and for sine x makes that a lot easier. All right, the last example in this batch is sine x times cosine x. Now, there is such a thing, uh, we talked about this couple sections ago, I think, as a term by term multiplication of series. So if I really wanted to, I could take uh, the series for sine x and the series for cosine x and, and start multiplying terms together. But I would say only do that if you get absolutely desperate. All right. So there is <clears throat> an easier way uh, and that is, so I'm going to give you a hint. I'm not going to explain right away what I'm doing. I'm hoping that you'll see it when I start writing it out. So I'm looking at this sine x cosine x, and I'm thinking, gee, it would be nice if that was a two sine x cosine x. 
And I guess I can make it a two sine X cosine X as long as I put a one half in front to make up for the two. Now the question is, does that two sine X cosine X look familiar? Well, that's the double angle formula for sine, isn't it? Two sine X cosine X is equal to the sine of two X. So this is a much easier way to do it. Uh, we're gonna take the series for sine X. So I guess this will be our third time using that series. Uh, you know what? And I'm just gonna write the closed form this time. The sum n going from zero to infinity, negative one to the n times X to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. So now if I want to make that into one half sine two X, I need to do a couple of things. First, I need to replace the X with a two X. So I'll drop a 2x right here. And then I need to multiply the series by one half. All right, so that, let me see, I might actually be able to finish this in this little bit of space. So we have one half out front times the sum n going from zero to infinity. And then it's going to be negative one to the n times two to the two n plus one times x to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. Okay, and then the easiest way to incorporate that one half is just to divide this two into this two to the two n plus one. So what that's going to give me. Let me make this a little smaller so I can fit my answer in here. I'm just going to bump that uh, two exponent down by one, the exponent on the two. So we're going to have the sum n going from zero to infinity, negative one to the n times two to the two n times x to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. All right, so that brings us to this problem uh, where they asked us to find the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for this function. So this will give you a little taste of uh, polynomial long division with infinite series. So I'm going to take one minus X, notice I'm putting the one in front, which might seem a little unusual. And then for my dividend, I'm going to put the first four terms of the Maclaurin series for natural log one plus X, which are X minus X squared over two plus X cubed over three, minus x to the fourth over four. All right, so as, for, as soon as I get four non-zero terms in my quotient, I'm going to stop. All right, here we go. So uh, first question, how many times does one go into x? The answer is x. x times one is x. x times minus x is minus x squared. And then I'm going to subtract the whole thing. X minus X cancels. X squared over two plus X squared is X squared over two. Now I'm going to bring down the rest of these terms. Some people bring them down just one at a time. I like to bring them all down so I don't lose them. All right, and then just repeat the process until you get four terms in the quotient. Uh, I'll switch to a different color now. One, 
into x squared over two goes x squared over two. X squared over two times one is x squared over two. X squared over two times minus x is minus x cubed over two. And now subtract the whole thing. I'm a little worried about running out of room here. X squared over two minus x squared over two cancels. X cubed over three plus x cubed over two. Uh, you're doing one third plus one half. One third plus one half is five sixths. So that makes this term five x cubed over six. Bring down the next term. Okay, I am definitely worried. Well, maybe not. Let's see. Not going to give up just yet about running out of room. Okay, step three. How many times does one go into 5x cubed over 6? The answer is 5x cubed over 6. 5x cubed over 6 times 1 is 5x cubed over 6. 5x cubed over 6 times minus x is minus 5x to the fourth over 6. Subtract the whole thing. Okay, so now 5x cubed over 6 minus 5x cubed over 6 cancels. Negative x to the fourth over 4 plus 5x to the fourth over 6. We're doing negative 1 fourth plus 5 6 which is 7 twelfths. And I guess, okay. So that'll be 7x to the fourth over 12. Okay, and actually I don't have to worry about running out of room because uh, we are basically done. The only thing now I have to do is just how many times does one go into 7x to the fourth over 12? The answer is 7x to the fourth over 12. And I can stop right there because uh, we have four non-zero terms. So the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for this function are x plus x squared over 2 plus 5x to the third over 6 plus 7x to the fourth over 12.